takes a special type of man to ride on one of those Saturn V rockets. For one thing, it takes a brave man, but also a man of exceptional training and skills. Now, three such men were chosen to form the crew of Apollo 17. Their spacecraft is tiny compared to the overall size of the rocket. It's really three rockets stacked one on top of each other, with the spacecraft up on top. The whole thing is taller than the Statue of Liberty. Several hours before launch, the Apollo 17 astronauts were helped into their space suits. It's a chance to see what they look like before they get those helmets on. The commander of the mission is Navy Captain Gene Cernan. He went to the neighborhood of the moon once before, more than three years ago, when he flew within 10 miles of the moon's surface. But this time, he'll land and walk there. He's married, he has one daughter, Tracy. Another Navy man, a commander, Ron Evans, will be the command module pilot. He's the one man who won't land on the moon, but he'll have enough work to keep him busy in orbit around the moon. John and Jamie Evans have been trying to get used to that idea. The third astronaut's a bachelor, Harrison Schmidt. His friends call him Jack. He's a scientist. In fact, he's the first professional scientist to go along on a space flight, and he had to learn to fly jet planes first. His field is geology, the study of rocks. Ahead of these men was a journey of a quarter million miles and back, and some new world records in manned exploration of the moon. for the engine start sequence at the 8.9 second mark in the countdown. The engines will build up to a thrust of 7.6 million pounds. T minus 30 seconds. We have a cutoff. We have a cutoff at T minus 30 seconds. We're standing by at T minus 30 second mark. We'll bring word to you uh, just as soon as we get it. We have a cutoff at T minus 30 seconds. T minus 30 seconds and holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. They had to wait a while for that journey to begin. The launch was delayed more than two and a half hours by a minor technical problem. But when it finally went, that was a beauty. We are on that terminal sequencer now. We have passed the three minute mark, T minus two minutes, 47 seconds and counting as we are on the terminal sequencer. At the T-minus 50-second mark, we'll be looking for that critical power transfer. This is where we transfer from the external power source, which has been feeding the three stages of the launch vehicle, to internal power, that's to the flight batteries uh, aboard the space vehicle. It's expected that uh, given proper weather conditions, people will be observing this flight from as much as 500 miles away. This includes a large portion of the southeastern United States, the northern tip of Cuba, and the Bahama Islands. Now approaching the two minutes, two minute mark. Mark, T minus two minutes and counting, and the countdown continues to move along smoothly. Now in the uh, terminal countdown portion. The automatic sequencer has stopped the replenishing of the liquid oxygen and the liquid hydrogen. We're standing by uh, 
now to begin pressurization of the fuel tanks, the second stage fuel tank pressurized, third stage fuel tank pressurized, the countdown continuing to move along smoothly, T-minus 90 seconds, T-minus 90 seconds, countdown continuing smoothly, S-4B propellants uh, pressurized, the indication now using the workaround showing the S-4B propellants have been pressurized. Now looking at the liquid hydrogen tanks as uh, they become pressurized, LH-2 aboard the second stage pressurized, all propellants now aboard the second stage pressurized as we approach the one minute mark in the countdown. Mark T-minus one minute and counting now in the final minute of the countdown. At T-minus 45 seconds, Gene Cernan will make the final guidance alignment. This is the uh, mark, T-minus 45, and Gene Cernan made that final guidance alignment. That's the last action taken by the crew aboard the space vehicle. Now approaching the half minute mark. T minus 33, 30 seconds and continuing on now. Continuing on at T minus 26, second mark, T minus 25. We'll get a final guidance uh, release at T minus 17, second mark. T minus 17, final guidance release. We expect engine ignition at 8.9 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 8, 6, 9. Thirteen. Okay, we do have 